Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the Town Council meeting, February the 13th, 2014. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And at this point, uh, we'll have the singing of O Canada. <laughs> Linda will keep a, a record of attendance and um, and item four is declarations of conflicts of interest uh, if, and uh, if no declarations we'll move on to the approval of the agenda with either additions and or deletions are there any of those tonight uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to add Viola Desmond. Immigration Navigator. And new appointment for the Lobster District in Southwest Nova Scotia. Thank you. Ken. Thank you, Worship. I'd like to add uh, development committees. Make a motion we accept the agenda with the addition. Second. Moved, moved and seconded by Councillor Mooney and uh, Councillor Langell. All Any questions? Question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded. Motion carried. Uh, next, we have uh, approval of the minutes of the uh, our meeting of January the 9th, 2014. Second. Questions? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded. Motion carried. B, Committee of the Whole, uh, January the 23rd, 2014. Any? Moved by Councillor Langell, seconded by Councillor Mooney. Any questions? Uh, Councillor McIsaac. Danny. Thank you, Your Worship. There was one here, one of these uh, committees, Committee of the Whole and, and uh, Town Council meeting that we had, and I'm trying to find it here, that in the minutes, I think it was when Councillor Mooney was late coming in and it shows him absent, but he was here probably an hour, an hour later, and I'm trying to find it, and I want correct it for the record because he wasn't absent for the whole three to four hours that we were here, just probably about an hour or so. And I but remember that. You, you remember uh, that, I remember yes. that concert. So I'm, concert, I'm going yeah. to try to find it, so I'm just serving notice when I find it. We could correct the records probably after or whatever. Yeah, I, I think we can do that. That okay. being noted, um, all, those, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Thank you. Town Council, January the 30th, 2014. So moved. Second. Moved by Councillor Langell, seconded by 
Councillor Mooney, all those in favour, please. Uh, any questions? All those in favour, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Uh, Committee of the Whole, uh, January 25th, 2014. So moved. moved by Councillor Mooney. Second. By Danny McIsaac, right? And uh, <laughs> I didn't have my eye, I, 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 but I recognize your voice. <laughs> Uh, any questions? All those, uh, if not, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. And the last item on under six, uh, Town Council, January the 23rd, 2014. So moved. moved by Councillor Moody, seconded by uh, Councillor McIsaac. Questions? questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Uh, 7A, Meritorious Medal, uh, Councillor Mooney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as many of you might not know in the audience and, and over the TV, we have uh, a gentleman in, that's from our area, Jeff Kenny. And I'd like to make a motion that a letter of recognition and congratulations be sent to Jeff Kenny on behalf of the Council and the Town of Yarmouth on receiving the Meritorious Medal, and he will be presented with this medal on February the 18th by the Governor General, I guess, in the residence in Ottawa. So, Jeff is a local boy. Um, he's done some work overseas uh, in the forces. Uh, Linda has all the information. I sent it from the family, and um, I don't know what Jeff's proper uh, rank is in the service, but Linda has it, and he has a lot of lot of letters in there. So uh, I know Jeff personally, and it's a great honor. Uh, for himself and his family, so I think it's fitting on behalf of the town of Yarmouth to send him a letter of congratulations. Moved and seconded, uh, Council by Council McIsaac. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Thank you. Um, 7B, uh, Councilor Langell. along Yarmouth's main street. Um, interesting points uh, were raised, and I guess this is more for the CAO, um, and maybe something we can't resolve tonight. I, I don't know if I'll be able to attend the Committee of the Holes, that's why I'm bringing it up. Uh, the uh, issue is snow removal along main street. Um, the question was asked that in Milton and in Yarmouth South, apparently our snow plow does service parts of the sidewalks in that area, at least this is what I've been told. And the question is, is why don't we do it along Main Street? I remember in the olden days of the YDC, that was part of their mandate. But nowadays, we have people, uh, businesses along the Main Street of Yarmouth that have to hire individuals to regularly take care of their sidewalks. And I was wondering if there's some way, I mean, to me, I wouldn't think it would be a big issue, or maybe I'm wrong, for that little plow to do a whip down Main Street and both sides, you know, as part of its routine. I know it literally does its thing on my street, on Collins for the schools and that, but it would make, to me, it would make a lot of sense to, if it's possible, to go along Main Street, at least clear the road for the merchants, and if the merchants naturally would be responsible to salt and sand as per normal, and, and maybe also uh, would give a, a chance so for the businessmen in the morning, I mean, they're taxpayers, et cetera. So I'm raising the question to the CAO, if we can start maybe looking at this, or is there some way we could examine uh, at least the plow to make a couple of sweeps along Main Street? Is that the sidewalk in the, in the areas? Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. The, um, I think the answer to the question is within our, our snow and ice policy. Uh, we can review that. I'll, I can have the town engineer uh, provide a memo back to council on that in terms of what, uh, what the issues might be. Would a, would a motion be in order? So I'd like to make a motion, uh, Your Worship, uh, that uh, council directs staff to explore uh, the necessary bylaws and procedures to see what can be done to institute regular snow plowing off the sidewalks along Yarmouth's main street 
especially in the area from Grand Street to Forest Street. Question. I, I just got a question on. I, I want to make sure I understand. I want to make sure I understand this right, Councillor. Are you was asking to to uh, the small snowplow that does sidewalks? Now you're saying it. They don't do Main Street South or North Main Street. The the sidewalk plow. It doesn't do the downtown core. Oh, this downtown core here. Oh, oh, I, I, oh, I, I misunderstood you. Okay, I'm, I'm glad, I, I'm glad I asked that because I was just, I was thinking that when you said south end, north end. It does it now. Yes. It there now, so yes. The okay. Downtown. In the downtown yes. core. Okay. Thank you. That's very clear now. Thank you. Thank you, Worship. I know that it was uh, brought up before, and it was an issue that when they plow, it would plow up both sides, so it plows in the doorways, and a lot of times there's just no place to put the snow. So I know that was an issue. I'm, I'm certain that uh, uh, Jeff will direct uh, the appropriate discussion. Yeah, and I think it would be the thing, it'd be interesting to see feedback. The, I had a couple merchants bring it to my attention. They've asked for it. I mean, uh, to me, it would help. I, I know a couple of times I've gone downtown in the morning early, as I usually am an early shopper, and it's quite horrendous on the sidewalks, especially where we have an aging population. Uh, we want to encourage people to come downtown as much as we can, uh, and the idea of having those sidewalks at least partially cleared would be good. And uh, luckily, a lot of the storefronts are up a little higher, and merchants usually get in a little earlier. I think they would probably be more grateful to have at least a sidewalk ability there. The other difficulty we have is we have a number, Your Worship, of empty buildings, uh, unfortunately, along Main Street, which is a whole other issue. Um, and unfortunately, they're not as expeditious, shall we say, in removing the snow. So you actually have islands around 10, 30, 11 o'clock on a business morning where you'll have a a going concern business which has nice clean access but to get to the going concern business you have to go through a couple of snow drifts from abutting property owners and although we have our bylaw enforcement officer doing a very good job in that maybe this plow would be at least a way to clear a, a bit of a path for people so that we could help I think anything to help bring our business downtown would be a help so that's why I'm glad that staff will look at that and report to our next meeting thank you very much uh, Councilor Langell Question, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Uh, item C, um, Councillor Langell. Thank you, Worship. Uh, not to uh, bring up a touchy subject, but it has been touchy lately, uh, namely the Killa Brothers building. Um, <laughs> Sorry, no problem. <laughs> the uh, the Killam Brothers building, um, I understand we're now going to or have gone to or about to go to the RFP process for that, which is, which is good news. Um, however, it's been brought to my attention, um, and again, this is for the CAO to look into, that uh, parts of that structure is within storm surge area. In other words, if we have water coming in over the wharves, there is some risk to the heating systems and the fuel tanks apparently in that building. Um, and I'm just wondering if we are looking carefully at that building. I know we're in the process now of an RFP, but I, I think the whole thing is starting to beg itself, like what exactly do we plan to do with the Killam Brothers building? And I don't know whether the Waterfront Development Corp has looked at it or if anyone's looked at it, but our water is getting higher and higher along the main street. And part of the climate change study, and this is why I put it in here tonight, shows that we are going to be seeing more and more and more increase. Um, it's been told to me by property owners along the waterfront that they're seeing differentials of eight to nine inches more of water coming up. And we're at a point, it was down there eyeballing the building the other day, that we're at a point that if we do get a bad storm surge, we could result in some serious issues within our building. So I'm just concerned. That's a beautiful building. I'd love to see the building maintained. I'd love to see the building used. But on the other hand, I'm bringing it up to the CAO. Maybe this is something we should look at since we are looking at the building now. 
what is our overall plan, uh, and especially, uh, there, if, especially the fuel tanks, if they're in a situation of any risk for the environment, is something we should be looking at. I'll let Jeff speak to that, but my first comment, uh, Ken, is that we are aware of the furnace, and uh, hopefully that will be dealt with. Yeah, that's, that's really all I can add at this point, um, is we are aware that water does infiltrate the, the basement. We are aware of the issues with the furnace, and we're looking into a, uh, a way of getting that up so it's so it's no longer in danger. Now, in terms of fuel tanks, you're talking about fuel for the furnace? Okay, not talking about the fueling station. No, okay, yeah. Um, item uh, D under business, uh, Ken, Yarmouth Agriculture Society. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I threw this on uh, simply to be it's been a very quiet, maybe I've missed a little bit here, but occasionally we hear good news and bad news. And on Tuesday, I was asked by CBC to do my usual commentary, and I picked the Agricultural Society as my topic. And I, I just wanted to pass on because I don't think uh, many of the public, I know the council is are aware that that seems to be working quite well now. Uh, there was a joint meeting here, and I just wanted to, to highlight, since I know we have a few people watching tonight, Your Worship, that the Mariner Center Board and the Ag Society have met, have met, they've reached an agreement, the exhibition's running next year from, I believe it is the 27th to, uh, uh, 27th of July until August the 2nd, and there's a nice linking going on there. There's not that animosity that was put in social media and in the press earlier, but I know in social media there's been no comment off it and there's been too much in the press of it, so I thought, well, maybe we should mention that, hey, you know, this, this matter's been solved and kudos to Mr. Dares and the Mariners Board and to Amy Rose and the Ag Society people. Everybody's got it on the same page and I don't know whether the CIO wanted to add anything to it, but I, uh, I'm very pleased. It was a very successful meeting, Your Worship. You were here and many of us were here at this session and it was, it was good. And it's nice to see everybody on the same page working to have a, an exhibition go in. I believe it's its 158th year. So kudos to all those involved and uh, I know I'm very thankful to see it was resolved. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Angel, and, and indeed it's important to keep on working together. Um, 8B, um, Citizen Advisory Committees, and uh, I'm going to ask uh, Councillor Dennis to assist with the Planning Advisory Committee items. Councillor Dennis. I move to proceed to a public hearing in order to consider and if deemed advisable amend the land use bylaw to rezone 19 Kemp Street from institutional to low density residential as outlined in the planner's report. Second. Question uh, or discussion, sir. Just, uh, just a comment and I, and I think everybody received the same correspondence from a concerned citizen and those concerns we passed on to Arthur in the planning department, Mr. CAO, I believe. Okay, thank you. Any more questions or all those in favor, all those in favor please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Uh, contrary minded, motion carried. Uh, Councillor Dennis. I move to proceed to a public hearing in order to consider and if deemed advisable amend the municipal planning strategy and land use bylaw to enable convenience stores, personal service shops and restaurants in any, de any designation by development agreement as outlined in the planner's report. Second. Moved by Councillor Dennis, seconded by Councillor McIsaac. Any thoughts, comments, discussions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Uh, 8B, uh, communities in bloom. Councillor Langell. It's all right. My, my, my apologies, uh, uh, Councillor Mooney. You're going to help me with Committee of the Whole uh, items on 8A and 8B. 
Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I move that $500 be granted to the Southwest Fusion Volleyball Club for Carnival. All those in favor? Any? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion, uh, contrary minded, motion carried. I move that the town of Yarmouth write to the Honorable Leo Glavine, Minister of Health, expressing our disappointment on the recent decision by the local district health authority to terminate the services of the executive assistance of the community health board and encouraging, encouraging the minister to revisit that decision in the upcoming fiscal year. Can be, be a second, uh, Councillor Langell, and he, uh, Philip would have moved it. Any question? Uh, question. All those in favor, please signify, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion, uh, nay, move, motion carried. I move that the town of Yarmouth proceed to follow the model of HRM for posting of expenses for the mayor and councillors on the town of Yarmouth's website effective April 1st, 2014. Seconded by Councillor Dennis. Any questions? Councillor McIsaac. Thank you, Your, Your Worship. I, I just got a quick question. I, I was re reading, reading this, and uh, I don't know, I think the mayor had suggested uh, when she was here when this came up that uh, it's not from April the 1st from 2014. It was from 13 or 12, whatever it was. I think that was her intent. I, I hope that was her intent because that's my intent for the 20, 20, at least the 2013 year, that that would be posted up to 2014. My my first question, uh, Councillor Macaza, would be if it's if we can do it, if it's possible. Well, that that and would I, be my question. I don't question. know from an accounting point of view. I'm not sure that's okay. possible. Well, but uh, but I but okay. I don't know that. I, I'll ask Jeff, uh, the CAO, is is that possible? or Is that a lot of work? I mean, I don't want to I don't want to make this a lot of work if it doesn't have to be. It, it, it seems to me it might be a lot of work. I'm not sure. I don't think it would be a lot of work. Um, so what you're saying is effective April 1st, 2013. Yeah. If, if that's what you want to do, why don't you amend the motion so that we get it right on the books? And okay, uh, I, uh, I, I move that, I, I make a motion that we date it back to April, the, April of 2013 uh, instead of the 2014. It all right, to, we should vote on the amendment first and yeah. then we vote on yeah. the motion. So all those in favor of the amendment which moves it back, uh, effective April the 1st, 2013. 13. And, and it just kicks in right yeah. after that. Signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. And then now the motion, uh, that number three. With the amendment. With the amendment. With the amendment. Yeah, so move. I, I, I call for questions. Yes, it's all. Okay, all those in favor, please signify by, signify by saying aye. aye. Nay. Motion carried. I move that a letter of condolences be sent to the town of Wolfville on the death of their former mayor, Bob Steed. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. I move that the honorarium for town crier David Ole be approved. Seconded by Councillor Dennis. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. I move that correspondence. Mr. Chair, I, I'd interject here because I, I neglected to add this to the agenda, but it's related to the town crier, so I'll try and slip it in here with your, with your indulgence. Um, we received correspondence from the town crier. He's been asked to uh, deliver a proclamation on the 175th anniversary of the opening of the Scotiabank business in Yarmouth, and because it is a private business, he requires the consent of council to do that. S second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Thank you very much, uh, Jeff. I move that correspondence be sent to the protocol office asking about the status of Prince Charles' visit to Nova Scotia. Moved, moved and seconded. Uh, question, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried.
I move that the town of Yarmouth be designated under the Fences and Detention of Stray Livestock Act. Moved and seconded. Uh, all, any question? <laughs> yeah, we went through that. <laughs> all, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Motion carried. Uh, Your Worship, from Committee of the Whole, January the 25th. I move that the application from Destination Southwest Nova Association be referred to YASDA with the understanding that we follow the same formula as we followed last year in partnership with the three other municipal units and that we recommend their participation. Moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Motion carried. Uh, thank you. I move that the application from Barbara Blauvelt be referred to YASTA for their study and review. Move and seconded by Councillor Langell. Question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Contrary minded. Motion carried. I move that the idea of a statue of the duck trolling retriever be referred to the Waterfront Development Corporation for further study. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Get back to the agenda in order. And uh, Councillor Langel, uh, uh, Communities in Bloom. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, we had a uh, rocking worship, or whatever the term is nowadays. Sure. Friend. Friend. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, we had a meeting yesterday of Communities in Bloom, and I apologize to Council. I didn't have a chance to send things out quickly, but I think much of these are, are motherhood items, recommendations from the Communities in Bloom Committee. Um, first of all, there was a recommendation from the Community in Bloom uh, that the Town Council consider increasing the budget for Communities in Bloom to 15000 uh, for this year to be referred to budget for consideration. That's the recommendation. If there's a second, I'll speak on that. And uh, speaking on that motion, um, we received a letter, a very encouraging letter from Communities in Bloom that Yarmouth might possibly be the site for the National uh, in 2018. Uh, since this year's event is in PEI, um, and it's quite close, we were going to ask for additional funding to send some of our committee members over. Normally we only send one or two people, but we thought this would be a nice opportunity where it's so close. We did this way back when it was in Halifax. Uh, many of us, like Councillor Mooney and myself and Councillor Dennis, very rarely go to these things but because uh, of the cost. But on the other hand, where it is frugal to go, that's why we're asking for the additional funding. So that's what the request was, and it was to be referred to budget for staff to consider. You've heard the discussion. Any more discussion or questions? Question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Um, secondly, uh, Your Worship, we uh, would like the communities and communities in Bloom would like to recommend Angela Goodwin and Vivian Kennedy for membership on as members of the Communities in Bloom Committee. That's the motion. Uh, to speak on that, uh, letters have been received by both of them. Uh, they have been kind of sitting with us. They've been coming to our meetings. They're very valued, and uh, our committee would like to have them to be added. And there's really no limit to our committee, so uh, the more hands we have, the, the better it is for us. So that was the recommendation of the committee. That was my question, too, Ken. Um, it's all in order? Yes. Yeah. And, we have no and, problem there. And uh, there are two very good people. Yes. Yeah. Any more questions or discussion? Pardon? Just, just by policy, you can you can have up to ten citizen members, and I think currently you have five, so this yeah. will bring you to seven. Yeah, we're, we're in good shape. More. Yeah, and we may be adding more. There, uh, there is discussion. The uh, Yarmouth uh, Senior High or the New Yarmouth High School has a very active green club operating there, and uh, we are looking at ways that we can incorporate them as a member, but. We'd like it such a way set up, but it'll be a discussion for a future date uh, so they can have a member come every year to sit on our, our committee as well. Call for the question. Yeah. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Um, third thing, uh, there was discussion at the Communities in Bloom yesterday as well regarding uh, the Brown Street parking lot. Um, there was discussion on it. 
Uh, the Yarmouth Garden Club has been quite integral to that over the years. Uh, they've been the ones that have been doing a lot of the flowers and, and things going on, uh, mainly in the planting, and the, the, the town and the Garden Club have worked very closely. Um, at our meeting yesterday, it was brought to our attention, apparently there's going to be some renovations or some changes to the Brown Street parking lot uh, this summer, uh, and uh, some of the uh, existing boxes, etc., may be removed or altered in some way. Um, the Garden Club would has some specific thoughts in mind for that. Uh, more notably, a certain brand of uh, hydrangea, which is quite attractive. That it's a new new um, new breed that basically changes color throughout the whole season. Uh, so the question came up: if there will be any citizens, there seemed to be in the discussion yesterday really. It's kind of quiet as to what's happening there, and maybe to you, uh, Deputy Mayor, because I know you're on the waterfront, uh, the Garden Club has got some thoughts on this, uh, and they would like to, they've brought it up yesterday, the Communities in Bloom adopted it as a motion, um, and uh, we're kind of wondering in the direction as to how you want to go with this, because we were off the impression, I guess the plan is done for that, or it's almost done, or it's about to be done, there was some real question if it'll be done for the summer or there were some questions we weren't aware of. So maybe before we put a motion, we don't want to put a motion in if, if, if things are all already finished. Uh, th th things, as far as I know, uh, can aren't finished. And um, so I, that, at this point, I would see taking that in information directly to the activity of the Waterfront Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. And I'll let Jeff help me out with that. Thank you. There, there is a committee that has uh, has met uh, on a few occasions, at least, to talk about streetscape improvements on on Hawthorne Street, and that would be part and parcel of that project. And so there are citizens involved, and I see no reason why uh, that group shouldn't have representation uh, there. So, if there's a contact person, if you can provide us with that, we can make sure that they are they are involved in that committee. So, given given that, uh, I'd like then to make a motion, and Council Mooney correct me if I mess this up somehow, okay, because I'm kind of weaving what we talked about yesterday at our committee. I'd like to make a motion that, that uh, members of the Yarmouth Garden Club uh, be welcome to make a, a submission to the necessary subcommittee of the Yarmouth Waterfront Development Corporation who is working on the Hawthorne Street project to bring into um, action, shall we say, their recommendations for certain plants and uh, presentation in that, in that area. That would be my motion. It's just a recommendation that they at least will be able to have some input into the, into the body. I, I think that's reasonable. Um. And, and just to echo what uh, Councillor Langell said from the community in Bloom's perspective, um, Vivian Kennedy had some very great ideas what she wanted to see down on Hawthorne Street and uh, I think she expressed those to the Garden Club and they have some, some great possibilities and she would like to be involved in the process just to, just that she can pick some minds. So um, now that we know that it's not set in stone and we'll be able to you know, redevelop. I, and the thing I wanted to make sure is that uh, citizens had input into the process and I think this will be a, a great way to access that information is to talk to as many diverse groups as you can and I think the Garden Club is a uh, a great asset and I think Vivian and Ange are going to be a great asset on on the committee we have a really good that communities in bloom committee for the money that we get from council um, we get our bang for the buck so um, I would like to thank council Andrew for chairing that committee and um, it's, it's probably the the best committee I'm on actually for the town so Thank you. Um, uh, Jeff. Uh, thank you. I just want to clarify because I didn't. I didn't say this. This part is the CBCL is the is the consultant on the project on the Hawthorne Street project, and uh, the consultant in terms of the landscape uh, design, the improve the the streetscape improvements has not met with the committee yet. They've only met among themselves. And so there's no opportunity missed. There is no, no plan even in, in sketch form with the consultant yet. So it, the timing is good. Uh, it isn't too late and their, their idea should be able to be incorporated. 
Thank you, thank you, Jeff. Um, yeah, because the, uh, thank you, Phil, for the nice comments. Um, because the Garden Club has been our stewards, really, in that parking lot. I mean, they've been wonderful. They've gone down, they've done all the planting, they've done the weedings, we've helped them out with the cost of the plants, but the actual physical labor, and a after the project is done, I think it's very important, or our committee feels it's very important to keep that relationship alive with them. And uh, we're very happy to have members of their club now on our actual committee, which is really refreshing. It gives us that little extra oomph to it. And uh, that's that's what we were hoping to achieve. So thank you for that. And uh, thank you for the motion. Call the question. Thank you very much. Uh, that was good discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Now we're down to <laughs> no better I, than that, Jim. I'm not finished yet. My, my, Don't apolo get excited. my apologies. Well, I, I wasn't looking forward to the end. I was looking forward to the next item. <laughs> uh, we're going to do a selfish plug here, um, Councillor Mooney and Councillor Dennis and myself here. Um, next Saturday, we're having uh, our first spring gardening fair. Uh, which is going to be happening at Yarmouth High School. Uh, Friday night here, we're having a Communities in Bloom reception open to the public. Um, the idea is to sh talk, showcase what we do as a committee. And then on Saturday at the high school, uh, we've arranged for 12 workshop sessions uh, to get ready for the spring. We're optimistic, and those looked out their window and looked at their ice dams like I have in the roof and probably leaking roofs think that spring is on the way, and we're optimistic. Uh, we have some excellent presenters. We have everybody from Bill Rose and Charlie Jess talking about vegetable gardens and organic gardens. Uh, we have Jim Spencer coming in from Shelburne who's going to talk about shrubs and trees and how to properly care for it. We're going to talk about our town compost. There's a session on that. We have uh, sessions also that are going to be on a variety of use of equipment, weed control, weed management, Canadian Tire has been involved. It's going to be a kind of a fun day at Yarmouth High and it's no cost. We invite the general public to participate and uh, we're kind of hoping uh, that a good crowd will be there. So it's our first attempt at this. Um, it's interesting uh, that we've had requests from far away of groups that would like to come in to actually present to this session, but we're a little nervous. We don't know how many people will, we may have more presenter than people showing up, but we've had people call from Digby and Shelburne. We may have to go, Councillor Dennis, to your um, room levy group for funding next year. Uh, so it, it, it is quite popular. It's going to be neat because we're starting our, um, our spring gardening next week. And also, we'll be using it to showcase to start our, our um, Peeper Watch project, which we started last year and uh, we'll be putting in place this year as well. So that's happening next weekend, Yarmouth High, 9 o'clock on Saturday morning, or drop in here at Town Hall next Friday night at 7 o'clock, <laughs> 7 to 8, for a, a meet and greet and learn what all the good things are happening in Yarmouth. Thank you. Uh Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully it will be well attended. I intend to be a spectator at that event. Need any more? <laughs> uh, under reports for information, uh, we have the minutes of meetings. Uh, the 8A is Occupational Health and Safety, December the 18th, 2013. And any questions or as a result of those uh, minutes being in our agenda? And also 8B, the uh, minutes for the meeting of December the 4th, the Yarmouth County Solid Waste Park. Any questions or comments to any one of us? Do we receive those by motion? Nope. No, just for information purposes, okay. Um, 8D, the mayor's report. Uh, mayor Mood is not here. She's representing our town as she does so well in other parts of the world. Nine is questions for committee chairs. Any any um, questions of any each other tonight? If if not, we'll move on to um, ten. The additions. The first one, uh, Councillor Mooney Viola Desmond. I think I'm Ken Langell here pretty soon. Uh, thank you, 
Mr. Chair. Uh, as many of you know, uh, after the last provincial election, our, our new Liberal government is going to designate a holiday, I think starting next year in February. Mm -hmm. And there's been uh, requests sent around the province to name this day, so they want to name a day. And I think um, the town of Yarmouth recommend that they name this day the Viola Desmond Day uh, in February. As you, as you know, with Viola Desmond, she's our own Rosa Parks. Um, February is African Nova Scotia Month, and I think it would be a great honor to put this name forward. Anybody have any thoughts or questions or comments? Um, are we the only, uh, who else, is someone else, other municipal units I recommending? Other, I think there's other municipal units that are doing the same thing. I think New Glasgow, I think, has done it, yeah. and that's her hometown. Um, and I think they're asking not only submissions from municipal units, mm -hmm. but also from individual citizens across the province. So. I don't think there's a better honor than, than what we can do for, for that. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Uh, immigration navigator, I didn't get all the well, uh, Yeah, and I don't know if there's gonna be a motion come out of this, uh, Mr. Chair, but um, as you might not be aware, or people in the public might not be aware, that our immigration navigator for this end of the province lives in Bridgewater. And uh, I don't know how to rectify that. And with uh, the report that came out yesterday with Mr. Ray Avani and the uh, commission with John Bragg, Irene, uh, that went across the province, they're going to say one of the leading things to increase economic development in Nova Scotia, or especially rural Nova Scotia, is going to be immigration. So I don't know how we can compete on an equal footing if we don't have an immigration navigator right here in our own community. And maybe um, I can ask the CAO, uh, would that be one of the concerns of maybe the new REN? I know that uh, we're going to have all the municipal units in this end of the woods have uh, committed, which is great news that came out today. Uh, but would this be one of the things that they would look at? I, I would expect that it would be. Um, the, uh, the original immigration navigator for our area was uh, employed by uh, our former RDA, and it was only when, when the former RDA ceased to operations did that position move out of there, and I think it was uh, maybe under CBDC that they had an arrangement. And, and they had a part-time one, I think. It was part-time, then it, now that's gone to the wayside. So. Uh, once we have our REN up and, up and running, I would think that that would be a regional project that uh, would make sense for them to lead. And I think um, we're having a meeting with our MLA in another or a week or so. This might be something that we bring up with the Honorable Zach Churchill. All right. Um, so just for information purposes and... That's if, yeah, well, I, think, uh, <clears throat> I think that's something we can bring up with the minister and that's something that will be brought up with the new mm -hmm. REN. So um, that's one of the longer term goals of that, that report. So I think it's important that we have somebody of that caliber mm -hmm. uh, in our area. Third item, uh, new appointment. New appointment, uh, Minister Gail Shea, minister, National Minister of Fisheries has appointed a... Uh, a points person for the lobster fishery in southwestern Nova Scotia. So I'd like to make a motion that we send Minister Shea and Greg Kerr a letter to have this person uh, placed in a Yarmouth office. He's a former, de I don't know if he's a former deputy minister of fisheries in Nova Scotia, um, but he's a former deputy minister, I think it's either Nova Scotia or New Brunswick. He's been appointed by Gail Shea too. Uh, help with the lobster industry here in southwestern Nova Scotia. I think anything from marketing to uh, to long-term viability to you know I think I think everything's on the table, uh, and this is all in southwestern Nova Scotia. So I think uh, we're in the geographical middle of between Shelburne and Matag and Digby. I think it'd be a great opportunity uh, to have that points person right here in Yarmouth. So that's why I'm making the motion. Moved by uh, Councillor Mooney, seconded by. Councillor McIsaac. Any more questions or thoughts on the motion? And the, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 
Contrary minded, motion carried. Um, development uh, committees. Just a, just a question, um, again, uh, for the CAO. Uh, it was brought to my attention that the municipality of the District of Argyle has not one but two uh, development committees uh, that they've been putting in place, and I realize they do have staff support. Um, it's kind of concerning because uh, the other day as I was driving down along Main Street after the recent snowstorm just to look around and snow removal, etc., I couldn't help but look at the hard state of our Main Street, and I know we've had discussions around the table about this. Um, where do we stand with development in the town of Yarmouth? Uh, I know we're putting our eggs in the wren basket, um, but I'm kind of curious because I understand Argyle has its own development group, and I've heard that Clare is heading in that direction as well, or maybe in that direction. I don't know about the municipality district of Yarmouth, but in Yarmouth itself, being a regional center, I'm wondering, should we be more active in development than where we are? We're kind of been in a no man's land for about two years here, uh, waiting and waiting and waiting, and uh, little comes to those who wait. You have to go and grab, or at least be proactive. And I'm just wondering, question one, where do we stand? Has there been any discussion with regard to the development committees that are happening in Argyle and what they're doing? And most importantly, which I'm curious about, is where do we stand? I, I was there was something on Wren today. I must have missed it. I was at work. Is some good news on Wren? I didn't get any emails. Or where, where it's happening? Or is something going there? I'm just curious where we're at on that. Yeah, there was a, there was a release that came out today, and I think uh, one of the points person was Alain Muse, the CAO from from Argyle was. Uh, quite enthusiastic about the response from all the municipal units so and Michelle Sampson I think is the one that made the announcement today so and I think they quoted Alain so um, I know I think everybody's on board from from the original group that we had I think Jeff uh, except, for except for Barrington and they were they were iffy anyways right at, at, at the start so we didn't think they're going to be participating but uh, the Minister of Economic Development made that announcement today about the rain. And I think we're going to be the first one going in Nova Scotia. Oh, oh let Jeff go. Jeff. So the question, question around the committees in Argyle, I'm aware of, um, of uh, Brenda Legrandeur's uh, position. Brenda is a, is a community development uh, officer. So the emphasis in, in her role is, is more on community development as opposed to economic development. Uh, she helps organizations in the community source funding from federal provincial sources, that kind of thing. And uh, I don't want to sell her short. I, I mean, I'm sure there's many things that she does that I'm not, not aware of, but she, that's one of the people that perhaps is, is working with one of the committees you're, you're referring to. I believe there's also a position that's funded through Acadian uh, sources that is specific to economic development. I don't know what the connection with the municipality is, but uh, I'm, I'm aware there is a position. As far as uh, we're concerned, obviously we're not involved in either one of those initiatives, otherwise you would know. Um, we have, uh, and I say we, I, I have had some uh, discussion with uh, Ken Moses, my counterpart with the municipality, around whether we should be doing something locally and, and collectively um, around economic development and I think there's my sense is there's interest um, you know putting together a terms of reference or, or parameters around that is is important because I think we need to be clear that we don't create right out of the, right out of the uh, out of the shoot a duplication between a Wren and, and the local person so as long as we can keep the mandate separate clear and um, and perhaps have a partner involved uh, I don't think it's a, a bad idea to look at it all because this uh, bodes the, the question, uh, if I am um, living in India or I'm living in Japan or I'm living in China and I want to locate a business in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, Canada and I want to learn about it, first of all, if I go on the internet, I'm, I will probably be shocked because we're just all over the map on the internet. Luckily, the town of Yarmouth website is nice and high, uh, but there's a, a real oomph, a mess of other sites that are around there that we 
I've always said is an issue we really need to address to get that presence there. Um, but the question I'm asking is, where, where do I go? Like if I'm actually thinking of putting a widget plant at Yarmouth Airport, hypothetically, and I decide I want to learn about Yarmouth, I know our council has given direction for a brochure slash whatever, whatever to happen, and I'm hoping CEO will give us maybe a little update on where that is. Uh, so there's that happening. Uh, but then on the other hand, where do I go to, to, to get the ball rolling, to find out about Yarmouth to locate is if is a call made to town hall and if a call is made to town hall who gets does it go to you Jeff the CAO does it I mean I'm I'm kind of hoping that why I'm raising this question is that whoever gets the call is a nice bright cheery person who's selling our community and not somebody who says no <laughs> no don't come here it's a terrible place I mean we don't want that we want to have something positive so I'm just curious in light of this no development and and even with the, with the 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 Wren and I again thank you Councillor Mooney for this I was unaware of all this today and I'm look forward to the press release Maybe we'll all get copies tomorrow or something. Um, but uh, the question is, is where do we, what happens there? Got me. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. The, so the first question is, where are we with the information uh, package RFP? The packages together, the ad will appear in Tuesday's Vanguard, or Monday afternoon's Vanguard. And we've allowed three weeks for responses to that, and so uh, that that is underway. <clears throat> that was uh, took a little more time to put together than I than I had originally anticipated, but found the opportunity, found the time, and, and got it out. Uh, so that's that's number one. If a company in India um, is interested in setting up a a business in Yarmouth, so they've identified Yarmouth uh, out of the gate, and they call Town Hall. Uh, very likely the, pho the phone call gets referred to me. And uh, so my, my um, resources in terms of uh, how do we help them, um, it starts with conversation. What are you interested in? We don't have a, uh, a good uh, inventory of our, of our assets. So it would, be, it would be a discussion that would lead to what you're looking for, what I can generally tell them, what I can promise to provide them. Uh, if uh, it should be that the mayor would receive the phone call, uh, if they called and asked for the mayor, she would receive it, and I suspect her response would be quite the same: is welcoming, um, and uh, you know, obviously try and try and reel in the business, but at the same time, not uh, not pretend that we know everything off the top. Like get some contact information and, and be able to follow up. The province does have a um, a branch, and I'm, I'm trying to rack my brain right now. For, um, I haven't, I've lost is, is they have a branch or an agency that deals with international, is international business leads. And so that would be the, the, the people that we'd want to bring in and, and have us kind of vet the business, understand that it's a legitimate and, and help us to, to put our best foot forward. If a lead comes to them, now this is the other, the flip side of it. If a lead comes to the province and looking for a place to set up in, in Nova Scotia, that's where they want to interact with the Wrens. They can't represent 55 or 54 municipalities uh, equally and all, everything. So they're going to depend on the Wrens to, to have that, that um, overview of the assets and the, and the um, possibilities within the regions. So as, as they talk to a business from India, they might realize that the best location is probably in southwest Nova. They'll deal with the Wren. The Wren will, will obviously try to reel, reel it in. And that is, that, that's probably where a local development person will be most helpful to us in that sort of situation is to really know where our assets are, to talk to us as a municipality if, if there were a, a municipal infrastructure that was required, whether it's a road or water, to, to seal the deal, they would, they would deal with us. So probably given, given how small we are on the global map, the call is more likely to go to, to the provincial level first than to come to us. But if it does come to us, there's nowhere else that phone call is going to go other than my office or, or the mayor, unless they ask a specific question about land use bylaw or about infrastructure, it might get, get down to our engineer. So. Thank, thank you very much. 
Um, next item is, are there any more additions that I didn't mark down? I think we're all set. Um, Next item, item, um, item number 11, is approval of invoices. Second. Moved by Councillor Langell, seconded by Councillor Mooney. Any questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary-minded, motion carried. And then item number 12 is the date of uh, the next meeting, and there's a consideration of a reschedule to March the 20th. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Motion carried. Yeah, yeah. Um, now we need a motion to move into in camera. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm raising on a point of order. Um, I'm kind of concerned with our agendas. I notice we have a, a shotgun approach to in camera. We have a list there that says that it pretty well has everything on it but the kitchen sink. And I believe under MGA, we have to be specific as to why we're going in camera, whether it is legal, whether it is property, whether it is personnel or whatever. Um, and I'm a little concerned from a public perception because I have been asked as people looked at the agenda and they said, my goodness, you guys discuss all those things in camera. And my observation was no, not necessarily. And I'm I'm wondering, Your Worship, for direction here, but I really would feel more comfortable if we, you don't have to go into specific information, but if tonight we're gonna to be discussing, I understand one item is a property item, uh, and I have no problem, that's within the MGA, but could we have the scope of the other items as to what, how they fit within the Municipal Governments Act before we go into in camera, because I can't vote for a motion to go in camera unless I know why I'm going in camera. You know, I mean, and that's, but to go in with a shotgun approach, i.e. five items on a list, and when I have no idea what they are, I'm a little uncomfortable with that. And I think for transparency to the public, we should be specifying, okay, we have a personnel item, we have a legal item, we have these specific items. Because I don't want people to think that we're going behind closed doors and discussing things without being transparent. Well, thank you. Thank you. I have uh, I have three items to discuss in camera with council. They are uh, ones with regard to lease, ones with, with regard to legal, and the other ones with regard to contract. Um, the reason we've taken this approach is uh, that there are a number of boards and agencies that uh, that we have me <coughs> excuse me members of council sit on, and uh, there may be items that are that arise at those boards that are dealt with in camera that this is the opportunity for them to brief council on those items and, and maintain the, the confidentiality through the in-camera process. So I might not be aware of, of a question that might arise out of one of those situations. So rather than not have it addressed somehow on the agenda, we've taken this approach, but uh, always open to, to ideas. No problem going to in-camera on those three items, and I feel if any other council member has an in-camera item stemming from another board or agency, that should be shared with the CAO or the mayor in advance of any meeting so that at least we're apprised of what it is. Uh, uh, I'm a little shell-shocked uh, from a previous council when we suddenly were hit behind the scenes with major decisions unprepared so I, I would feel that if any councillor has a, an issue that's arising from a board or an agency that they feel need to be shared with us in an in-camera that should be discussed with our CAO by all means and then the CAO would make a recommendation for it to be added so for tonight's purposes I'd have no problem you know supporting an in-camera on those three items. Thank you very much, Councilor Langell. Uh, Councilor McIsaac. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Jeff, the other one on personnel and property, property sale and purchase is that uh, I know personnel is, is uh, using in camera. Am I correct? Yes, always. Always. And uh, property sale and purchase is usually an in camera item where you're discussing prices and everything. So if we're going with the three, the, uh, I, I don't know what the leases are. That the leases that had prices, prices in in that we're going to talk about. Is that one of them you're going to talk about? And and legal is probably 
another matter we're going to be talking about that is have to keep things confident and contract that means it's pretty straight up and and, and the uh, the other two fits into the five so I, I okay so what I was what I was thinking there was talk uh, some time ago around the table that we would just put in camera items and looking at this I never gave it a thought counselor uh, Langell but when I when you brought brought a point of order and I'm looking at these these items the five that are there I was thinking that perhaps I misunderstood when I made the motion to go in camera and then when you started to talk on it I thought well these are just some of the topics we could talk about well and I get what you're saying now if you don't know what these topics are before you go in camera you know I mean for the public out there they don't understand but these are personal matters that have to be discussed behind closed doors yeah, that's, that's correct that's right. okay sure. then I was right by moving the motion to go in camera great thank you Questions? all those in favor please signify by saying aye, aye. contrary minded motion carried thank you very much and thank you very much and happy Valentine's Day everybody yeah.